Hi, I'm Shelly Owens with Go Be Love, and I'm back with the next installment in our Mission Accomplished video series. So up to this point, I think this video series has been pretty light, and I'm afraid that today might be the first time that I really step on someone's toes. Um, because today, and probably over the course of the next few videos, I'm going to talk about something that's a, a little bit of a hot button for some people, and it's something that everyone who has been to the mission field, including me, has done at some point or another. So starting today, we're going to talk about handouts on the mission field. And by handouts, I mean literally anything that you pack in your suitcase and carry over to the mission field with the intention of handing it out for free to someone who is not a Westerner. And we can probably all agree that American mission teams are pretty famous for this practice, for showing up in a majority world country with our checked luggage and our carry-on baggage and everything we've got just chock full of stuff that we intend to give away while we're on the mission field. And I think handouts can take a lot of different forms, but the things that I see people carry over most frequently are things like craft and school supplies for children, um, building materials, baby supplies, used clothing, and sports equipment. And those are the things that I feel like I see people bring most often. Now, do not get me wrong. I think that this practice is pretty much always um, well-intentioned. I don't think anyone packs a 50-pound crate and carries it across the ocean with impure motives. But what people often don't realize are the unintended consequences that can come from that very well-intentioned act. So I'll jump right in by saying that I think people are often shocked on their first mission trip when they arrive in this majority world country with all this stuff that they've packed and carried over and they realize, I could have bought all of this stuff right here in this country. Things like school supplies and building materials those are all available for purchase in every country where Go Be Love sends mission teams. So whenever possible, we want our mission teams to purchase supplies that they need in the country that they're going to, and in doing that, they'll support the local economy. And not just that, it's just a generally more sustainable ministry practice to acquire the materials that you need for ministry locally. If you're always having to bring materials in in order to execute your ministry, then you're creating this cycle of dependency and you're not moving towards sustainability but more towards a model of dependence and there's really no end game for that. So the other side of this coin is that we have the ability when we constantly bring free things into a majority world country and hand them out, we have the ability to destroy local industry. And you have to think in terms of big picture here, if we think of the cumulative effect of all the mission teams that hit a single mission field over the course of a year, and imagine that every trip participant from every team carries over free clothing and hands it out for free, imagine the impact that we've had on people who live in that majority world country and they sell clothing to make a living because no one can compete with a price that's zero dollars. So those are just some things to consider for today. I'm gonna to come back next time and talk on this some more, but I'm also gonna share with you some of the ways that Go Be Love is changing our policies and things that we're doing to utilize that suitcase space for our mission trip participants in a more healthy way. So thanks for tuning in today, and I hope you have a great day from the Go Be Love team.